In this video, we're going to look at importing Land XML surfaces into Traverse PC. Let's take a look at the surface we imported when we imported an entire Land XML file in one of the previous videos. Here I've got the existing ground surface, existing ground of quarry, it says, uh, over the top of the parcels and alignments. If I turn this one off, I can turn on the FG surface. This one says from a 3D grid. Let's see if that comes up for us okay. And here we see that um, this is actually a proposed surface and uh, we've got uh, elevations appropriate for the alignments that are being designed or proposed uh, here in this project. I'm gonna turn that one off, go back to our existing surface just for a moment. And as I've done in some of the other videos, let's take a look at the importing of those surfaces first. Here we're going to tell Traverse PC <clears throat> that this is the XML file we want, we're gonna import. And I want you to notice that this has two surfaces, an existing ground or an EG surface and an FG uh, from a 3D grid. And just like with the other data objects from Land XML, we can say, I wanna bring in just this one surface, or I wanna bring in all the surfaces, or I wanna bring in the entire Land XML file. So it's pretty flexible as far as which data you actually bring in. Let's close that out, close this out, and let's go ahead and look at this existing ground surface that Traverse PC brought in. I want to talk to you about a couple of things here. Uh, let's start with the advanced tab here first. And I want you to see that Traverse PC has imported the TIN, uh, the triangulated irregular network, by importing all of the faces from Land XML. And then it locked that. So that's what this toggle is here. Lock the surface to retain, to retain the current configuration of the TIN. Survey points are not automatically protected, but we have uh, locked or protected the tin. So if I come back to this surface and tell it not to draw the contours, but do draw the tin, and let's use a darker color here so I can actually see what I'm, I'm doing. Let's go to a, a gray or dark gray here. I can see that I actually have the, the surface tin that I imported from Land XML. Uh, the great thing about having the tin is that those faces uh, also identify where the break lines are and where the borders are. So we can see this red line on the outside. These are actually faces, but it's identifying which edge of this face is a border. And Traverse PC is drawing that in red. So it lines up really nicely with the project we're working on. And all of that was available through the Land XML uh, surface. Let's go ahead and open this back up and uh, tell it now we don't want to draw the tin, but we do want to draw the contours. And of course, we can apply that and it looks the way it did just a moment ago. So let's take a look at the surface here real quick. Here's our description and our name from Land XML. Uh, Traverse PC uh, established a source for this by putting all of the vertex points or all the points for the surface in a traverse. And I'm just gonna see if I can get back out to the traverses here real quick. And I see that uh, Traverse PC created two traverses for the surfaces, one for the existing ground traverse and one for the FG or from 3D grid traverse. This one has 713 points the FG Traverse has 2,716 points. So Traverse PC says the source for this surface are the points in this Traverse, and that's what this is all about. So this surface gets its points from this Traverse. That allows me to have multiple surfaces inside of Traverse PC. It also allows me to compare surfaces, to get volume between surfaces, cut and fill sheets, um, it's kind of a neat way to, to handle this. Um, I also want you to notice that the Land XML file had a minimum and a maximum elevation in it. So Traverse PC honors that and says, I'm gonna only consider uh, points between 20, 230 feet and 290 feet. And then if I look down here at the information for the surface, I'm basically gonna see that it matches up with whatever was in the Land XML file. So I have the planimetric area, 
I have the surface area, and these match the land XML data as well. Now, I don't think when I imported this, I got any break lines. Um, they weren't specified in the land XML file, so break lines were not included. Had they been specified in the land XML file, they would show up here, and they would they would be break lines that went from a reference point to a reference point, reference points being the vertices uh, in this uh, surface. And that leaves me then to create whatever kind of contours I want. If I want to create 10 foot major contours and two foot minor contours, I certainly can, and I just did that here. That kind of cleans it up a little bit, smooths it out a little bit, a little easier for me to work with or look at. Uh, but it's really up to me. If I want to change the contour colors, uh, I can do that here. So I want to use a very dark blue major contour and a light blue or light gray minor contour. Um, I also can come in and compute volume information by going to another surface or to an elevation um, or to a border, things like that. I've got all the slope analysis tools available inside Traverse PC. And I've got the advanced tools that allow me to change layers and such. Uh, because this surface is locked, Traverse PC will never have to come back in and recompute the tin. Uh, it just honors the faces that we imported from Land XML and doesn't uh, have to come back and recompute it. It does recompute the contours and the labels and whatever else I want to include in there um, so that I can display this contour information differently inside Traverse PC. So I have, I have lots of opportunities to edit the surface. I just don't have to have opportunities to edit the tin. I will tell you that I can come in and turn that lock off and I can regenerate the tin from the topo points that were assigned to this Traverse. So we could let Traverse PC come in and generate its own tin. That would allow me to further edit the surface with break lines and borders if I chose to. I just don't don't have to. Now, one final word that um, when I do go to um, export a survey in Traverse PC, uh, whatever surfaces I've generated or imported into Traverse PC can be exported right back out to a Land XML surface, and they're rich surfaces. So I'm going to export back out the, the vertices, the points, the faces, the borders, the break lines. Everything that I had available in Traverse PC can be exported out to the Land XML surfaces if I choose to.